Greetings fanboys and fangirls, Jared here with another video from Fanboys Forever. Today we're going to be talking about some interesting Masters of the Universe Revelation news. Uh, just when you thought hype couldn't go through the roof anymore for the new show, we have a brand new breakfast cereal coming out. That's right, it's the Masters of the Universe Revelation Eternia Crunch Power for the Fight cereal. And uh, this was revealed by Mattel and by FYE, the entertainment store. And you can see that they have a nice little promotional shot of the cereal. You can see they have Masters of the Universe Origins figures, not the Revelations figures. I guess they thought this would look a little more retro-y. I actually like the artwork on the front. I think it does a good job of kind of uh, being a good callback to those old original cereals. I do think the cereal doesn't look very imaginative at all. I don't think that there's any kind of shapes in it or anything like that. I think it's just blandness, like uh, big fruity rocks. <laughs> and I don't, I think that there should have at least been some marshmallows or something. That, this tells me that this was kind of like maybe a last minute idea. They sort of rushed it into production and was like, you know what, let's just print out some box art and just throw it on. Uh, the one good thing that I will say, they do have one of those world's smallest toys in the box. And this is in line with FYE's other exclusive cereals because this is exclusive to their store. If you've ever been in an FYE, like in a mall, you'll probably see a whole cereal section that has like those mini pop Funko uh, things in them and some other different little toys. They're like collectibles that also happens to contain some sort of edible cereal portion, if that makes any sense. So I do think that's interesting. It looks okay. It, the thing is, I won't be doing a taste testing of it here on the channel. I'm about positive that uh, this cereal contains gluten. I have celiac disease, so maybe some of you all are familiar with that, where it's just a wheat allergy. So I doubt I'll be able to eat it, but it still looks cool. Uh, it is $20 for this box of cereal, as you can see on FYE's website here. <laughs> and you can pre-order it. It's going to come out on the 17th, but uh, no, I don't, I don't think... No, <laughs> no, I'm good. I don't think it's nearly as cool as Loki Charms, which sold out in like seconds, which was a total joke. However, though, I do think that Skeletor approves because here we see him and here's another shot of Skeletor looking at the cereal. So the other reason that I'm making the video today is to do a rundown of this last trailer. I do feel like that some of my points were a little misinterpreted from the last video that I did talk about Masters of the Universe Revelation. I really want nothing but for the show to be as great as it can be, and I wasn't trying to prematurely cast any judgment. I was instead voicing a lot of my concern uh, about some of the rumors that I'd heard and maybe I was just letting them get to me. However, this trailer does sort of confirm some of those ideas that I talked about, but it may not be a bad thing, so let's get right into it. So the trailer opens up and we actually see the three Eternia Towers. now. For anybody who's familiar with this, this was a gigantic playset that uh, represented kind of all of Eternia that you could get in the um, kind of more of the tail end of the Masters of the Universe original line. I never had it, but it sure does look incredible and it even had like a little track where different like uh, cars could go through and you can see them up there. So they've recreated that very faithfully. I think that's great. Then at the beginning of the show, we see Tila is angry at learning something and I'm pretty sure I know what it is and she decides to quit the Masters of the Universe team. So that is sort of leading into some of the things that we talked about. I thought Stinkor looked really good and it looked a lot like his 2000X counterpart, actually. And then we have Tila with her new look and I think that that has kind of uh, been something that's drawn some uh, ire from fans. And we have He-Man here. I think this is from more around the beginning of the show. There's Skeleton Warriors back there. I'm glad because there's a lot of touches in this that shows that the brand people at Mattel really did a good job at making sure that there were lots of deep cut references. So I do think that's really cool and I do want to applaud them for that. Kevin Smith is a super talented writer and incredible director. And um, you know, I, you're talking to somebody who I, I actually like yoga Hoosiers pretty good. So <laughs> that's, so that's saying something about my love for Kevin Smith. But, you know, I doubt that he knew all these like deep cut references and he's like, man, you got to get Skeleton Warrior in there. You know, I'm, I would say it's his uh, buddies at Mattel that's making sure that touches like this go into the show. And uh, just for clarification, it's these guys with horns that kind of look like Skeletor. Those are the Skeleton Warriors. Here we have an interesting new look for Triclops. I'm not sure I'm crazy about it because I it's hard for me to let go of him wearing green. That's just a petty thing. Um, you can see that 
we have Prince Adam here and it looks like a significant portion of the show is going to be him in this form. This trailer does confirm that indeed the power sword is split in half which is kind of the problem. I'm glad it's not destroyed or something like that. And I am I think it's cool that it's split in half because that is a callback to the original lore in the mini comics and those first toys. Now this picture has caused some controversy. So I do want to get into this a little bit. On the left, you can see my probably my favorite Masters Universe character of all time. And that may sound a little weird because he didn't actually appear in any media, but that's about to change. Hero. Obviously, it's Hero. Gold armor, you can see his bare shoulder right there. It's Hero. In the background, you have Vicor, who was like the savage Conan-like He-Man. Uh, he had a figure in Masters of the Universe Classics. Really cool looking, kind of the Four Horsemen's way of doing uh, Conan. And then on the right, you have the more controversial aspect. Uh, that is clearly, I mean, I'm pretty sure about this, King Grayskull. And it's very notable that uh, King Grayskull's ethnicity has changed here and that now he is portrayed as a black man. You know, there's different ways to feel about this. Of course, it, it always gets a little prickly when something gets changed. And uh, I'm sure that that's all that this really is, is a visual change. However, um, you know, there, I'm sure there's going to be people who are saying, OK, they're just putting that in for the sake of, of putting that in. It's not it's not meaningful. And I think it's awesome whenever you can introduce more diversity into a show, especially when you create these uh, black characters and things from the ground up and make it more than just uh, some kind of swap. However, I, I do want to say some positive things about this. For one thing, King Grayskull, very, very important character uh, in the 2000X mythology, of course. It's great to see him paired with the original classic continuity. It is also a solution in some ways visually to a problem that has always existed about King Grayskull. He has always just been kind of like a slightly bigger He-Man. There has not been a whole lot there aside from the long hair and kind of the fur on the shoulders to really differentiate him from He-Man. There's been a visual uh, problem there where it's just kind of like, oh, that's He-Man, but he's just bigger. This goes away in solving this to say, okay, you know, maybe there's some, maybe, you know, it kind of gives him more of his own identity, which is cool. And I think it's all going to depend on how they handle it. But like I said, I'm, I'm a very visual person. I think that it's going to be something that uh, makes it more visually interesting. And I love King Grayskull, you know, and it's one of those deals where, you know, I saw these pictures of Aldous Hodge, who's going, who's a black actor, who's going to be playing Hawkman in the new Black Adam movie. And I looked at the guy and I said, yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, visually, that looks awesome. So I don't I don't have a problem with this. I definitely think that it stemmed not from them, you know, sitting there being like, you know, what can we do to change something or what can we do to, you know, put force diversity into something? No, I really think this was done as a way to be like, OK, well, let's let's give it a visual differentiation. You know, let's give it something to make it just more interesting and um, definitely gives a much needed element of some diversity in He-Man's legacy. When you look at this bloodline of He-Man characters all throughout time, which was really established by Scott Nightlick and the gang at Mattel during classics, I think it's cool to have some different versions of He-Man. And when, if you really want to be as inclusive as you can be with all these different versions of He-Man and really make it interesting, then you're going to include also some racial diversity in that lineage as well. Here we have some shots of kind of the more like future versions of everybody. You have this new look for Beast Man, which I'm not crazy about. Um, there's not really much going on. Like he's just kind of bare chested and he's just not as interesting looking. So I actually think Beast Man is my least favorite of the new designs. Uh, once again, here we have everybody together and uh, yeah, it looks decent. I'm still not a really big fan of uh, Tila's haircut, but it's just, you know, I'm I'm not trying to be obtuse and um, ignorant like we see a lot of people online have been about Tila here, but I just, it's just a little, I don't know. It just doesn't, it's an awfully big departure. Cringer, uh, Steven Root as Cringer is probably my favorite voice performance in the trailer. I think he sounds really terrific. Here we have Faker, which has been confirmed by the recent figure. And he has a big battle with Tila. And uh, I think that actually looks pretty cool. And in some ways, I really do think that this 
this is probably what a lot of leakers and people were sort of upset about that I have a feeling that this is like one of the big final challenges or something that's uh, going on at the end of maybe this I, I don't know I don't know what's going to happen it, and that's the thing and that's something I should have been more clear about with my last video about this is we just don't know what's going to happen yet and it, I should have been more clear that it's just speculation and I am willing to give this a chance and I'm willing to be open-minded about it. I'm still worried about things uh, in the show. Obviously, I think a lot of people are still worried, but I really want to see Kevin Smith prove everybody wrong. Um, I, I am very excited for the show and really there's just nothing else to say about it, I don't think, unless something comes out uh, before the premiere on July 23rd. There's, it's just time to just wait it out. As we journey towards the premiere date, this is just kind of a fun time to be hyped and kind of be filled with possibility for what this new version of Masters of the Universe could be. All hoping that everything goes very well because I definitely want to see this become a, uh, a new era for Masters of the Universe. I want to see it be everything that we hope it can be. And I certainly hope that it does live up to that standard and I um, have all the faith in the world that it will. On a final note, uh, people are finding the new Masters of the Universe Revelation figures in giant displays at their local Walmart stores. Of course, this goes hand in hand with the news that we had gotten that initially these will be exclusive to Walmart for just a little while, but the pre-orders are already up at places like Big Bad Toy Store, so be sure to check that out. I unfortunately looked at my local Walmarts and they have not got their Masters of the Universe Revelations displays out if they're even going to have a display. Sometimes my Walmart stores don't really participate in things like that. Other places will have giant displays and things, but mine does not all the time. So uh, either way, happy hunting. And I hope you guys have a lot of luck in finding these figures. I have Battle Cat and uh, Skele God did reviews of both of those but those were at Target, which came a lot quicker. All right, guys, that'll be it for me. Of course, be sure to follow us on Twitter. That's a great way to keep up with us and a great way to contact us. Also, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel because we do have a lot of videos coming up, not just Masters of the Universe related, but many, many other toy topics. Particularly, I'm working on a really big G.I. Joe toy documentary about, uh, I think, a lot of people's favorite line from the three and three quarters series. So hopefully you all will stick around for that video. And as always, God bless you and yours. Be safe out there and I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. Fanboy out. I would suggest, Perry, that you wait a little before criticizing my new persona. You may well find it isn't quite as disagreeable as you think. Whatever else happens, I am. King Grayskull. Whether you like it or not.